comes to collecting stormwater samples, there are compliant techniques and not so compliant techniques that you can use to get the job done. Hi, I'm Shuka Rastagarpur with the Division of Water Quality at the State Water Resources Control Board. And in this video, we hope to give you, the qualified industrial stormwater practitioner, some guidance and practical tips for collecting representative stormwater samples. I'm Brandon Rosenboom, also with the Division of Water Quality at the State Water Resources Control Board. Many times, collecting a representative sample is a combination of good planning and adapting to current conditions. The goal of this video is not to give you a stormwater sampling manual, but rather to share important concepts that will help you think on your feet and collect a representative sample out in the real world. Yes, every facility is different, so there is no one-size-fits-all approach. What you see in this video might work for one facility and not another. Try to see past the specific examples and look for the underlying concepts which apply to each facility. Before we get started though, this video is not intended to be a stormwater sampling crash course. There are a few things that we are expecting you to know. As a QUISP, you should have a working knowledge of the California Water Board's Industrial General Permit and its sampling requirements. The facility you are working with should also have a compliant SWIP in place with a description of the facility's discharge points, sampling locations, and the required sampling parameters. You should also have a working relationship with an analytical laboratory that is part of the Environmental Laboratory Accreditation Program, also known as ELAP. You should have a sample kit with the correct number and types of laboratory supplied sample containers for the facility. Furthermore, you should know how to fill out the chain of custody form and determine how the samples will be delivered to the lab within the appropriate holding times. You should also be familiar with the discharge characteristics of the facility, the time constraints for sampling storm events, and how many sampling events are required. Also, you should research and know any exceptions to the sampling requirements, such as unsafe conditions, outside of facility operating hours, and such. But requirements can change with time, so make sure you check with the current industrial general permit. Think through the facility operating hours and make sure a sampler is ready to respond during normal operating hours. So, why do we collect stormwater samples? What are we trying to determine? The California Water Board's Industrial General Permit requires each facility operator to sample stormwater runoff discharging from their property in order to gauge the effectiveness of their pollution prevention program and best management practices. And because these stormwater samples are evaluating the facility's effectiveness at preventing or removing pollutants, they should be representative. What does representative mean? Well. A representative sample gives an unbiased snapshot of stormwater quality associated with the facility's industrial activity. A representative sample should not be the cleanest water you can find, and it also shouldn't be the dirtiest. You can think of a representative sample as reflecting the average quality of the facility's stormwater runoff. When, where, and how a sample is collected can greatly impact how representative it is. And be careful about run-on from neighboring sites and from non-industrial areas. Most of the time, the location for collecting a representative sample will be determined ahead of time by the QUISP and should be reliable. But in the field, things can change. High water levels mean the original sampling location can be unsafe or maybe water from the neighbor's property has backed up into your discharge point. You must be able to adapt, come up with a plan B, and still collect a representative sample. Stormwater samples are collected in order to get a realistic assessment of how well a stormwater management program is performing. Ready to start? In this video, we are going to look at three very common sampling scenarios and talk through some approaches to collecting samples for each one. Don't forget your sampling equipment, which may include a sample kit, drain grate hook, sample boom, chain of custody form, and pH meter. If you're going to be in traffic areas, bring some traffic cones too, but the exact equipment you need will be dependent on site-specific sampling logistics. Let's check out our first scenario, sheet flow. One of the most common and challenging types of stormwater discharge to sample is sheet flow. Sheet flow is when stormwater doesn't collect in a ditch or channel, but runs off across the surface of a facility in a thin sheet. Here, it looks like we have someone trying to grab a sheet flow sample using a dustpan, but it's not working out. Right about now, he is probably wishing he could make a low spot in the pavement. Let's think about this. Does this sample look representative of the water leaving his property? What about all the dirt he stirred up digging that hole? This is definitely not the best way to collect a representative sheet flow sample. Let's go back and see what he did wrong. First of all, 
it looks like he is using a dustpan to try and collect his sample. Although this may sound like a reasonable way to collect a sample, the analytical method used for testing oil and grease does not allow water samples to be transferred from container to container, or the result may be biased low. This extends to the sample collection. No intermediate containers or sample collection devices may be used to collect an oil and grease sample. Dust pans, pitchers, or plastic bags are not allowed. The oil tends to stick to the sides of the intermediate containers, removing it from the sample and causing inaccurate analytical results. If you're using automatic samplers, things get a little complicated. We're not going to get into the details of using auto samplers in this video, but you should know that auto samplers must be specifically designed to handle parameters like oil and grease and pH. Another problem is that he is contaminating the stormwater sample by stepping in the water that he is sampling. The sample collector should always stand downstream or out of the water flow if possible. Our sampler then digs a hole in the nearby gravel and then uses his dustpan to collect the water. It turns out he's onto something here, but this is definitely the wrong approach. The sediment disturbed by digging ends up in his stormwater sample. That is not representative of what was flowing off his site. And he's still using the dustpan, so sorry, pal. Now, we asked the quiz to look at the sampling location and suggest a better way to collect stormwater samples without breaking the bank or installing any major modifications. This is what she came up with. But remember, although this is a better sampling solution for a particular discharge point, it might not work at your facility. Pay attention to the concepts used here, not the specifics. When the QUISP saw this sampling location, she saw the need for two things. First, some sort of low spot must be installed to allow the sample bottles to be filled directly, without using a secondary container. This problem was solved by installing a small underground pull box at the sampling location. The pull box is deep enough to accommodate the sample bottles. When not collecting samples, the lid is left closed and the stormwater flows over the pull box and discharges off-site. Second, the flow must be increased or concentrated in some way to make it easier to collect a sample. Whenever you are collecting samples, it is important to pay attention to your safety. Many times, your sample collection point might be in a vehicle or equipment traffic area. Not a great place to be working close to the ground. Make sure you are visible, and if possible, use the buddy system. Personal protective equipment is also important. Sampling usually involves cold weather, conditions, slippery surfaces, caustic chemicals, and dirty water. Make sure you're wearing appropriate clothing and footwear and use powder-free gloves and eye protection when handling stormwater or sample bottles. Also, don't forget about other PPE that may be required by your facility. Avoid smoking, eating, or drinking while collecting samples. Not only is it not safe, but there is a chance you can contaminate your sample. Now, let's move on to our second scenario, drain inlets. Collecting representative stormwater samples from drain inlets can be challenging, especially if there is a drain insert bag or other BMP installed, like in this case. It looks like our sample here is struggling with the drain insert bag. Having drain insert bags installed at sampling locations is almost always a problem, because at any time the bag is disturbed, it releases trapped pollutants and sediment back into the stormwater and right into your sample bottle. It looks like he's collecting a sample from the conveyance pipe at the bottom of the catch basin. Remember, looking for representative stormwater samples, and what our sampler did here was not the best way to capture a representative sample from a drain inlet. Let's see what he did wrong and find out what he could do better. The first problem that we see here is the facility has installed a drain bag at their sampling point. Drain bags can be great BMPs, but having one installed at your sample point can make it difficult to grab a representative sample, especially here where it looks like the holding straps have become weathered and brittle. Remember, samples should be collected after the BMP, which in this case results in a bunch of sediment being released and flowing right where he is collecting his sample. The second problem is that our sampler is not using good sampling technique. It looks like there is not a lot of flow in this drain, so he is scraping the bottom of the catch basin to fill up his sample bottle. This is not a representative sample because he is stirring up and sampling whatever material might have been lying at the bottom of this catch basin, which may contain pollutants left over from years past, or may have come from non-industrial sources. 
At any rate, it is not representative of the water leaving the facility. And if there is any preservative in the laboratory supplied sample bottle, he lost it while scraping the bottom of the catch basin and disqualified the sample. Unfortunately, these problems with sampling technique caused high analytical results, which were noticed by the water boards. The facility was inspected by the Regional Water Quality Control Board, who issued a notice of violation for inadequate sampling protocols and a non-compliance monitoring program. The facility contracted with a QUISP to respond to the violation. Let's see what the QUISP recommended for a better sampling setup. In addition to more regular sweeping and good housekeeping, the QUISP recommended that the facility remove the drain insert bag and replace it with a drop-in filter unit with a sampling port. And after studying the facility's drainage system, the QUIST determined that the most representative sample from this drain inlet should come from the water flowing into the drain, not from the water flowing in the stormwater pipe down below. This does two things. First, by installing a plastic drop-in filter with a sampling port, the BMP no longer has to be disturbed when collecting a sample. This means all of that sediment captured by the BMP will stay put until it can be cleaned and disposed of. Second, the drain insert funnels all of the water flowing into the drain through the filtration unit and out through a single opening in the bottom. This provides the sampler with a representative and post-BMP sample of the water flowing into the drain. It is important to know where you should take the sample in the drain inlet. This depends on each particular drain and drainage system. In this case, the sampler collected samples from the drain line at the bottom of the catch basin. But because of possible commingling in the drain line, the quiz determined a sample from the water flowing into the drain would be more representative. Also, remember how the sampler was scraping the bottom of the catch basin while collecting the sample? This brings up a good point. You should never touch the sides or surface of the drain inlet with the sample bottle. You might contaminate the sample or break the glass bottle. Don't forget about safety. Did you notice the traffic cones? If you're in an area with vehicle traffic, make sure you're visible. Okay, let's move on to our last example, manholes. Taking stormwater samples from a manhole is a little less complicated than sheet flow or drain inlet samples, but there are still a few things you need to consider. It looks like he's using a sample boom, which is good. Keep in mind that manholes are confined spaces. You should never enter a manhole without a confined space entry permit and proper training. But it looks like he's having trouble collecting a sample from the bottom of the manhole. So he is just filling up his bottle from that other pipe. The problem is, we don't know where that pipe is coming from. And if he was supposed to collect a sample from the conveyance pipe, sampling from that other pipe is not a representative sample. Let's see how the Quisp approaches this situation. After studying the facility's drainage system, the quiz determined that the water from both lines was industrial stormwater runoff and that a representative sample should be taken after the water coming out of the pipe commingles with the water in the conveyance line. And in order to solve the low flow situation, the quiz recommended that the facility install a weir inside the manhole, which should be epoxy to the side of the manhole to prevent leaks. The weir would cause the water to back up inside the line, eventually becoming deep enough to collect a sample with the sample bottle. One thing to be aware of when installing a weir like this is that it changes when your facility discharges. Only collect samples after the water flows over the weir and any initially impounded water is cleared from the system. A system like this will also require maintenance. The area upstream of the weir will tend to fill up with sediment and other pollutants and will need regular inspections and cleaning. Okay, let's summarize. The purpose of this video is to give you general guidance, not an exhaustive sampling manual. There are many things that we didn't cover about collecting stormwater samples, but that are important for you to know. Make sure to read the current industrial general permit, especially those sections relating to stormwater monitoring and sampling. The most important thing that you should learn from this video is the concept of representative sampling. As a QUISP, you must look at the facility's drainage system and figure out the most representative sampling locations. Collecting stormwater samples is not just about filling up bottles. It's about getting an accurate snapshot of the facility's stormwater quality. It determines the facility's public compliance story. The data informs future facility investments in BMPs, and high-quality statewide data helps inform the Water Board's future permit development. I'm Shuka with the State Water Board. And I'm Brandon with the State Water Board. Happy, Happy sampling. sampling.